SegaBits presents Sega Talk, a podcast talking all things Sega. with your hosts, George and Barry. Look, it's a giant talking egg. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the master here. So what's up? What is up? No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, hello and welcome to an all new episode of Sega Talk. I'm Barry. With me is George. Hello, everybody. And on this episode, we are going to be talking about Super Monkey Ball. Now, uh, before I get into that, I should mention that SegaBits is on Patreon. So if you want to dictate what we talk about on Sega Talk, if you're a supporter at certain levels, you get to do that. And uh, we have we have a couple. Danny is one who's been telling us what to do. And he wants to do uh, a, a certain game that's going to take a little bit more time in the oven because I'd like to spend a little more time looking at interviews and stuff. It's a little heady. But I thought between then, we're going to be doing one that we want to do. And that's Super Monkey Ball. And why did we pick this one? Well, I actually thought it was kind of fitting because Judgment just came out. And, (laughs) you know, you look at that game, you look at this game, what's the common factor? Do you know what it is, George? Uh, They're both have monkeys in ball. No, um, they're both by... (laughs) Uh, well, they have some of the same developers, basically. This is an Amusement Visions game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll get into the development in a little bit. So what, what we do on Sega Talk, if you're new to this, we talk about a game. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about Super Monkey Ball and Monkey Ball. So I guess we just broke our own rules. And um, the history of it, the development, the gameplay, and our memories... And so to kick things off, let me go through the intro. So Amusement Vision's Super Monkey Ball franchise began in 2001 with the arcade release of Monkey Ball on April 25th. And the game ran on the Naomi GD-ROM arcade hardware. And the cabinet featured a unique banana joystick, which players used to navigate monkeys inside clear balls through various puzzles collecting bananas. The goal was to reach the goal! whatever they say. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so what are your earliest memories of Monkey Ball, and did you experience the game first at arcades or at home? I experienced it at home. So I obviously Super Monkey Ball because that's mm-hmm. what they renamed it for the home version. And, you know, it wasn't one of those games that I played right away, and I don't want to be like... like I, I understand fans sometimes hate when I say dumb things like this, but, like... At that time, I was totally playing more like Japanese games and like Super Monkey Monkey Ball or Super Monkey Ball, the early designs. Mm-hmm. It had this weird, strange like art style to it, and it just didn't appeal to me. So I never picked it up right away, and it took me a, a while to pick up because I was like, I, I don't know, this this is not really a platformer. It's kind of it looks like a, a platformer, but it, then I looked in the back, and then I was like, this isn't a platformer, and then I picked it up. When they did like a deluxe version, and I really, really, really loved it. It reminded me of like Marble Madness or whatever that old game was, but with monkeys and balls. And <laughs> um, so basically, I regretted not playing it right away. Uh, I do know that uh, the GameCube version is the best one, right? Yes. yes. And that's the one I played the most of. Uh, I do know the sequel is the same thing almost as the first one, isn't it? It's It's... Very similar. I think I own the sequel and I own the compilation for Xbox. So, I, I see no ver- I see no reason to pick up the first one, to be honest, despite us talking about it. Because yeah. you can get basically the base game in those other titles, yeah. And that's one of those things, right? This is very Sega arcade-ish, so this is like the last... Because when you play like, uh, let's say, um, Hang On and then Super Hang On, or um, what's the other one? There's a there's a couple other ones where it's like Afterburner, oh, Afterburner and Afterburner Two, two yeah. where it's just Galaxy the, Force Two, exactly. And this is kind of like the last bit of Sega being the arcade company. But uh, what's your history with Super Monkey Ball or Monkey Ball? <laughs> so I remember when the Dreamcast died, and then they were saying that all the developers were going to be going to different places, and I didn't go with the GameCube. I went with the uh, PlayStation Two and the Xbox. And even then, like, that was a big thing to have two consoles. But I was a Sega fanboy, and I had to play as much as I could. So unfortunately, I missed out on Super Monkey Ball at its release. However, I do have a very distinct memory of grabbing a banana and rolling a monkey around at an arcade. And it might have been this game. Uh, or that 
could have been something completely different that I should probably, you know, you know like report to the police or something. Maybe. But um, I just remember grabbing a banana, man, and the balls were there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I distinctly remember that. And I remember how intuitive it felt. It just felt so... The controls... It's, it was like some of the best controls I ever experienced. And when people talked about the GameCube, you know, port being better than the Xbox and PS2, I did end up getting the uh, the Xbox Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. And it's a fine game. It's fun. But I, I can totally see why the GameCube one was probably the most beloved. I finally picked that up last year and played it. And it's, it's amazing. Like, it feels so intuitive. And it's uh, kind of crazy that uh, Amusement Vision kind of really pushed the GameCube control to its, like, limit. Like, right. even the F-Zero thing they did was, like, you needed the GameCube control and it used every, like, the little clicking on the on the 2R and whatever, the little <laughs> top buttons. Yeah. So, yeah. to do the, the turn. So, yeah, it's crazy. But, yeah. And I guess to, like, describe the controls, it's very precise it's very like kind of hair trigger like you just it's what is that hexagonal thing is that what that is like it's got that little like inside the d-pad inside the uh, analog stick on the gamecube it has like little like ridges yeah yeah and it it just works so well because it like locks you can push it all the way and kind of lock it into one place so if you want the ball to roll in a certain direction it's like it's locked in and precise it's not kind of slipping it around with your finger and it just it feels so good <laughs> it does it actually really does and it's it's why i'm assuming the gamecube version is loved by everybody because like when i played it on the ps2 i thought it was a good game and then when i played it on the gamecube I, I was like it's a lot better on the gamecube for sure for sure yeah for sure and uh the arcade one i played it most recently two weeks ago actually they have one at galloping ghost and it it plays well i don't think as good as the um as the gamecube just because it feels a lot more intuitive to have it in your hand like that but you know grabbing that big banana it's it's fun it's i think it's a little more simple um than the maybe not as simple i mean it's one to one really but it's just there's something about the arcade version that that makes it a little easier i don't know if they altered the difficulty level or what but um both are great so as we mentioned monkey ball it's a rare case in sega history <laughs> where the home console port overshadowed the arcade original, and the game was ported to the GameCube later that same year on September 14th in Japan. And this acted as, like we mentioned, an upgraded version with all the original levels, plus enhanced graphics and extra features. And we kind of answered this already, but I would like to just get our uh, firm decision on this. How does the GameCube port compare to the arcade original? Does it outdo it? I, well, I can't speak about this. I've never played the arcade original. So, mm. and to be honest with you, I didn't even know there was an arcade original until like someone sent me maybe like back in like 2006. Someone sent me like a uh, the picture of just the banana stick, and, right. and, and as a joke, obviously, because it's pretty like obviously you know we can make jokes about banana sticks um, <laughs> all day. So um, right, right, yeah. So uh, I didn't know about it until then, and I you know arcades are not very uh, popular over here and the ones i do go to do not have monkey ball they have like i would say the sega essentials like outrun you know daytona that kind of stuff crazy taxi you know but not this one this one i feel like it's a more rare arcade the arcade was more rare Mm -hmm. you're lucky you have galloping ghost arcade you just go in there and they have every arcade ever made (laughs) i know i know i think for my a gift to myself i might get a year pass and just go there whenever we do one of these but it's yeah it's i'm spoiled let's be honest yes yes <laughs> but uh what do you uh, think about the arcade original on the gamecube port um the arcade original is very casual friendly i think it's great for like it's a game that like if your mom went to the arcade with you i feel like she could get addicted to it it's so it's such a simple game and i think anyone has ever played one of those little marvel games you know that you hold in your hand and you try to get it into the the little hole at the end of it that's this. I mean, it's it's a very easy pick up and play, anyone can play sort of game, and of course I think that's because of uh, well we'll mention him in a little bit, but um, yeah it's 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 a very simple game. Whereas the GameCube one, it still has that quality, but it also 
video gamifies the game a little bit more. So, of course, there's extra things like mini games and party modes. Oh, okay. Things like that. So, so the, uh, ar- the arcade version does not have any of the party mode stuff. No, no, no. The arcade version is just that base going into the puzzle and trying to see how many you can, you know, jam through. Oh, man. Like, that. like some of my best times in this game is playing the mini games. I don't know about you, but like. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time playing the mini games. The fact that they weren't in the arcade, I mean, I could already, I, I just assumed that like they had more than one cabinet connected. Like, I right. just assumed that like arcade games are more multiplayer, you know, because that's, that's the thing well, as biggest hits. That's why this is super monkey oh. ball, whereas you know the other ones monkey not, ball. It's just regular. It's not super <laughs> at all. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So. Um, so the concept itself is not entirely unique because Atari's Marble Madness beats it by 17 years. However, Super Monkey Ball does have the distinction of being the first rolling marble mo- this is really hard to say, the first rolling marble puzzle game in 3D. And uh, just I'm going to look at the wiki here too, the the Wikipedia entry because they do talk a little bit and I've been teasing who it is. It's Toshihiro Nagoshi worked on yes. this game and yes. he worked on uh, Yakuza and Judgment. Judgment's his first game he's directed in quite a while. True, too, right? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. been producing mostly. Right, right. Yeah. And so he, he's he been credited as the creator of Daytona USA and Virtuous Striker. He worked alongside Yu Suzuki. And I think a lot of you know, Yu Suzuki's kind of quirks rubbed off on him. And I feel like they're probably of kind of the same mindset in some ways because... Uh, and I'll, I'll quote him later on too about this, but he's not one to go to an arcade, I feel, and want to be getting into a super deep game. Like he likes something that's very pick up and play. Yes. And, and he, it is said here that um, he devised this concept of rolling, uh, rolling spheres in mazes. And the prototypes involved a plain ball or a ball with an illustration and they found that these were just kind of unappealing and so they did a series of revisions and had monkey characters that were created by a female amuse this kind of annoys me they say on here in the wiki created by a female amusement vision designer can we give her name i'd like to know who this person is <laughs> exactly how many yeah just just a <laughs> yeah. random female you know what from now edit out negotiate i'm gonna say he was a male sega employee created uh, anyway yeah um, But, well, I want to know who this is because they have the distinctive ears. Like, that's what makes these monkeys so memorable. That's how you make a memorable monkey. Exactly. So, so yeah, so that's that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, So, how do you think Super Monkey Ball compares to Marble Madness, if you've played that? Uh, I have. Do you you prefer, and I kind of, I think I know your answer on this based on previous episodes. Do you prefer the 2D isometric view or behind the back 3d view i hate isometric so 3d <laughs> view is 100 percent better but yeah. marvel madness is probably one of the better isometric games it's still an yeah. isometric game but it's a lot easier to play than most isometric games because i don't know like they got the physics down for being such an old game so yeah. that's what always amazed me when i was a kid playing that game i was always like they got the physics down of a marble actually moving and like most games can't figure that out uh, Super Monkey Ball has its own physics. It's not like I don't know. It's kind of hard to describe, but the three D yeah. back thing really makes it really helps the game uh, for its gameplay. They're both great games, but uh, Super Monkey Ball is I think is better, especially yeah, the, considering all the new tech and uh, stuff that went into it. Oh, absolutely! And I, from what I remember of Marble Madness, the marbles are very fragile, so they'll break when they go over a ledge. Monkey Ball, they they want you to like play with death and like drop down because you know you've seen you've seen the maps i mean we i i never really put this in the show notes but you know you've seen the maps and they just like it'll be like this zigzag pattern going down and you could take that whole zigzag or you could kind of tip to the side fall off and then land on a way lower ledge the problem is is you might bounce and like go crazy and the thing is, is they have that sound effect too, and it goes, and it's so it's kind of like Sonic's uh, peel out, where you just you want to hear that, but yeah. at the same time you're like, this is not going to end well. Um, so I feel like whereas Marble Madness, it's very it it, it wants you to coddle the balls. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, Super Monkey Ball, they want you to like 
roll those balls all over the damn place. You know what Poor I mean? Poor monkeys, dude. They love it though, don't they? I mean, they're <laughs> they. I mean, they get dizzy and stuff, but they're like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, and th- that's the thing they have. And like you said, uh, are we going to talk about the, the, the characters or the uh, art style? Because you Yeah, yeah, it. we're going to get into that next, right. actually. Um, so, believe it or not, Super Monkey Ball actually has a story. And the original game had players controlling Ai Ai, Mimi, or Baby with little or no setup. However, the GameCube sequel in the compilation game Super Monkey Ball Deluxe for the PS2 and Xbox has a story. And here's the story. Here's the story. This will sound great. So Dr. Bad Boon comes from the future to kidnap Mimi and, and make her his wife. Baby followed him back into the past to thwart him. So after foiling his many plans, including shrinking the, shrinking the monkeys and building an army of I.I. robots to discredit him, Bad Boon opts to activate his space colony to take... So the space colony to take the taste out of all the bananas in the world. And after being defeated by all the monkeys, he surrenders in the days saved. Um, That's a great story. You should make a movie so, of it. Like the, the Super Monkey Ball universe. That sounds like those, those Twitter things where it's like Twitter bot video game plot. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, so what do you think about the Super Monkey Ball world characters and story? Does it remind you of... Uh, anything it reminds me of Donkey Kong. So yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing. It always reminded me of Donkey Kong, to be honest. Yeah, with yeah. What do What do you think? Um, I mean, like I told you, like for some reason the characters never. And we're talking about two different character designs here because the originals right have its own character design, right. and then they redid it for like uh, I guess the new or more mainstream titles. Um, for some reason the characters never really. Um, I don't know, reached out to me and said, buy this. But then again, I was thinking the same thing about maybe Donkey Kong. I think Mm -hmm. when maybe when I was a kid, I didn't buy it for the monkeys on the cover. I bought it because of the hype of the game. And so when people told me this game is great and I should play it, and obviously I was a Sega fan, so I was like, why haven't I played this? And then I played it, then I really liked it. So I think, to me, it was more about the gameplay that sold me on it and how how much fun I had with it. Mm-hmm. Do I think that characters are uh, badly designed? No. They all have their own unique shape. You can see them right... When you see a shadow, you know which one's which. Um, yeah. I do like uh, Mi- Mimi's design. I think the backpack thing is pretty... Uh, is this the one with the backpack on it? Uh, I... 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 I, 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 I is the one. Yeah, yeah I, I is the one with the backpack. But yes. they gave him a backpack later. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Okay. So, yeah. I don't know. I... I'm kind of mixed with it uh, about the story. It's so ridiculous, dude. And how many times... Every time they have monkeys, they always have to have a banana plot, right? Or bananas, right? Heavily involved. Right. Do do monkeys really like bananas that much? Or are they lying to I think it's... I think it's just like... They like they like fruit, and I think it's just a cheap fruit that they give them at the zoo, right? Yeah, I would assume so. But anyway, <laughs> what's your... Um, how do you... What do you think about this amazing plot, the characters... I think the plot, I mean, the plot is just about as important as the plot to Pac-Man. Like, you know, it's not, it's really not, I don't think they need to do story modes for these games. Um, and I forgot, I don't think I mentioned Gon Gon. Um, mm-hmm. I don't remember if Gon Gon's in the first Monkey Ball. He's in Super Monkey Ball, but I have to, I have to double check when I play the game again to see, because I feel like he was an addition. But, um, actually, speaking of Gon Gon 2, I'm wearing my, uh... Gone Gone promotional shirt. Let me see if you, I can show Oh, he's showing off now, huh? Yeah, let me see if I can get the back. I'm not wearing pants. So. Oh, well, I mean, you don't need to wear pants when we're recording Easy. Talking Sega. But uh, it says, it says uh, one banana, two banana, three banana, Gone Gone. And it's for, I think, Banana Blitz. I bought it at a video game shop. But um, I like it. I also have uh, an II t-shirt that was sent to be my Sega Europe some time ago. And it's like, it's legit. It's orange. It has the big A, and then the back has an entire backpack, but it's, like, screen printed. And if you wear that in hot weather, your back gets so sweaty because it's, like, having plastic on your back. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's bad. Um, It's, like, the best, worst shirt I own. And plus they sent me, like like, a medium, and I'm like, bro, this is... Come on. People that play video games don't wear mediums. Get out of here. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think the story is kind of forgettable. I actually like Dr. Bad Boon, and it's unfortunate that he doesn't really factor into the games themselves. Like He's the, he's the monkey version of uh, Dr. Eggman. 
I guess, but like I don't remember controlling him or playing against him. I don't remember boss battles or anything. Then again, I haven't played like some of the later games with story modes so much. But um, I love the character designs. You did mention that there are two versions. Mm -hmm. And so what it is is that when they first designed the characters, their heads were, I guess, kind of pr more proportional to their body. Um, they had black, like Mickey Mouse pie eyes. Whereas in later games, and I think this was once they went onto the Wii with uh, Step and Roll and mm -hmm. Banana Blitz, they gave them eye colors that matched their hair. And Mimi no longer had the pies. She had these like circle eyes. And they added dots to her dress and they gave Ai Ai a backpack. And I think Baby like went crazy. Like I think Baby went to the future and has goggles now. It um, happens to all, all babies. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so, but I, I, I think they're incredibly iconic characters, um, so much so that I'm going to argue something that might be controversial uh -oh. uh, later uh -oh. on in the show, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, this is something that I think you really want to talk about. So in addition to the sequel's story mode, multiplayer minigames were also incredibly popular. Some might argue that there are just as many fans of these minigames as there are of the main game. And so my question is, and I'll, I'll prattle them off before we get into it. What are your favorite mini games? Were Target. there any? Okay, <laughs> that's it, dude. Were... That's I can play it all right. day, dude. You're right. Uh, were there any you thought eclipsed the main game? Target. And any that you think could carry a spinoff? Well, I so... think. Oh my god, I'm so... okay. So I feel like every single time after two. Yeah. Uh, every time Sega try to come back, I'm always like, it, it's okay. Or mm. this one is not as good. You know, they did the right, DS right, right. ones. They did all these other ones. And I'm right. like, why can't you guys just... At this point, I just want one and two re-released on everything because I just want to play these mini games. Um, but yeah, right. uh, Target is great. I think there's a lot of great mini games on the first, first two games or the deluxe version especially if you get those. But... Um, I, I, I don't know. I feel like uh, this is like the height of the series with these mini games. But that maybe maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe people will say, "No, the Wii one was really good. You're just an idiot and an old man." And uh, I mean, I yeah, I remember when because um, when these games were coming out on the Wii and the 3DS, we were the, the site Sega Bits itself was kind of young, but we were covering these games. If I remember, we the and first game were... I reviewed on Sega Bits is uh, the Wii Step and Roll. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Step and roll. Isn't that a character on Game of Thrones? Step and roll? I don't know. Oh, it's Step and Wolf. <laughs> that's a different DC thing. Comics. Yeah, that's DC. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, but anyway, yeah, so here are, the, here are the ones. So there was, and I'm not going to say monkey every time, but monkey billiards, bowling, golf, fight, race, target, tennis, baseball, shot, boat race, soccer, and dogfight. So those are the 12 that were in the first two games. And uh, you love Target. Yeah. Which one do you, I which love one's Target. your favorite? Um, see, the thing is, a lot of these, it's just like, well, you have the ball physics, so you're going to make mini games that are like bowling, golf. I think the sports ones are kind of forgettable, except for golf. Yeah. Um, but I will say Target is the most fun. It reminds me, what's that one? Pilot Wings? Is that the game? The Nintendo kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Pilot Wings. Um, it's just it's so unique because it's like it's like a hang gliding game with the with the ball, and so really the ball physics don't factor in immediately. You're you're it opens up, and I just think that's such a cool concept of it opening and then being able to fly, and yeah. then and it's so satisfying to like fly and see the target and then land. It's. Uh, like what do you, why do you love monkey why do you love monkey target so much? I just played it a lot when I was uh, playing this game. It just seemed like the easiest one for everybody to get into, and I just had the most memories with it. So that was just my thing. I and uh, I don't know. Maybe people like it too. I don't know. I just remember playing it a lot. That's all. That's yeah. why I like yeah. it. But uh, yeah, go on. Sorry. I think it's a good. It's probably one of the best ones there, and it's a good multiplayer one because. It's so fun to see all the crazy stuff that happens when, you know, you're you're landing on the target and it's you know, you get to like I don't know, what 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 do guys do when they're playing video? Oh, look at that man. Oh, you know, like Oh, that sort look of at stuff. that little monkey in that ball, man. Yeah, man, I love him. What? No, I don't love him. I just like I just like really but, like uh, him. 
Yeah, I love them. I love, I love them. Uh, but it's, yeah, I, I can totally see why people get so excited for these. And I guess the only unfortunate thing is, like you said, it hasn't really been outdone in the later games. I feel like when I've heard people responding to Step and Roll and um, uh, Banana Blitz, they'd be like, oh, the mini games weren't as good. Yeah, it's but at least it has that. monkey target. They always want monkey target, though. And another thing I dislike, well, mm-hmm. while we're here already talking about this, is that they always try to add a gimmick to it. Oh, you buy it on the on, on, on mobile, you you move the the phone around, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then uh, you step and roll. You have that that little board they put on the Wii where you lose weight uh, for the moms. So right. it's like they always try to add all these gimmicks, and I'm like, I just want to play it on a control, man. Is that too bad? That's yeah, that's a good point, and I'm I'm actually looking forward to talking about that. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. It's it's cool. Um, but uh, so we we already talked about Nagoshi, mm-hmm. and so as I said, it was uh, created, produced, and directed by Sega's current chief creative officer Toshihiro Nagoshi of Yakuza and Judgment fame. So how do you see Super Monkey Ball and Monkey Ball fitting in? With Nagoshi's past, so, you know, uh, Daytona USA, and his future, so um, Judgment and uh, Shin Yakuza, things like that. How do you see this fitting into his catalog? Is it something that seems strange, or does it seem like a, like a transition that would make sense for his career? I don't know if it makes sense for his career, but, like, he... Yeah. I think he was, I don't know, finding himself. Because if you think about it, the longest period of time he's worked on a series has been... Um, the Yakuza series. Before yeah. that, it was like he had Daytona USA and then this, which doesn't really make any sense, really. And then I guess he did F Zero with the team after this, which makes more sense in his catalog than uh, making right. a, a, a game. I, I've never felt like he would make games for kids, but this one has like a very uh, mainstream kind of like a kid mascot platformer look to it, which. That's isn't really yeah. isn't really what he's known for at all. So this is pretty unique, and it did get really popular at the time when it came out. I think when I saw the early GameCube sales for this, the first game was like over a million units sold in America alone. Oh so yeah, it, it was it, big. Yeah, so it touched a mainstream audience. I think it's a mainstream audience that probably won't play Judgment or play Yakuza. It's uh, Mm -hmm. probably more of a mom and a kid. I think that mainstream audience that a lot of people want to hit. Yeah. um, That is very untouchable. So that's why I think that uh, I wouldn't even be surprised that the phone one does well. Um, But yeah, uh, Mm. I don't think it really... I think this is unique in his catalog. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. And um, like I was, you know, getting a little pissy earlier when they were not mentioning the name of the character designer. I really should have been looking that up. I don't know why I haven't. But I, I, the reason for that is is because I think the concept is very much a Nagoshi concept. Oh, yeah. But yeah. The, the art style is very much not. And so that's why I wanted to know who the character designer was. I'm going to do that right now because I don't think it's fair to her. Um, but... Because it, it seems like the concept is his, but I feel like it's probably not a stable of characters that he feels really close to. No, um, I feel like he's, at that time, was just thinking about the engine and how the engine works. Because if you've seen interviews, I mean, he uses the same engine on F-Zero, so it's a pretty good engine. <laughs> Cause it, that's it, true. Yeah, F-Zero yeah, yeah. is one of the nicest looking games so on the GameCube, so... I feel bad. I can't find it. Maybe that's why they were like, I, I swear she was a female. I saw her once. Sega doesn't allow uh, her name to be uh, put out there. Oh, man. That sucks. That sucks. Well, I'll I'll keep clicking around during uh, when you talk and pretend to pay attention to you. But, um, yeah, what were we talking about? Monkeys? Yeah, Super so... Super Monkey uh, Ball. We're talking about <laughs> if, if it fits the catalog of uh, Nagoshi. Yeah, yeah, and... I, I feel like it does in the sense that when you hear the development stories behind Yakuza, Judgment, and some of the more minute aspects of the gameplay, like the mini games and things like that, it totally fits. Like I could see them going to this effort to create a game that's fun, that grabs you immediately. I mean, you even kind of get that in a lot of the uh, the mini games in Yakuza and um, Judgment, where they're just like they're so addictive and fun. And I think, and no offense to Shenmue, but unlike Shenmue, it, 
they f- don't feel so much like a uh, like a, a chore. I don't know. Like I, I just feel like pool in Yakuza is a lot better than pool in Shenmue. Yeah. I just feel like they they put a lot more effort into mini games. Than, so than I some I other found games the designer. Do. I saw. Uh, yeah, yeah. So would you like to say her name? Mika Kojima. Yeah. And so she created I I. Yeah. And it's kind of weird, though, because no relations to the guy from Metal Gear Solid, guys. Don't get all happy. <laughs> Sorry. It's a sister. It's yeah. a sister. Let's just say that. Oh, that wow. way people feel... Wow. Poor woman, right? They didn't even put her in the Wikipedia article. If you edit Wikipedia articles, please put her name in the Super Monkey Ball one. I do not edit Wikipedia articles. Yeah. I don't want to deal with that. Sorry. It's interesting, though. Yeah, she has had a long career with Sega here. It looks like she started on Virtua Fighter as a designer. She became a CG designer throughout the uh, Virtua Fighter CG portrait series. So all of those, like, weird portraits of characters posing. Um, And then she did main character design on Virtua Fighter 3. um, Spike character designer on Spike Out. Rent a Hero. Mm -hmm. The uh, remake. Planet Harriers, yeah. Character designer on Super... And then she stopped after 2005. What happened to her? They took Where away the go? Super Monkey Ball franchise. Probably left the company. I don't know. Maybe retired. That's so weird, right? Yeah. Wow. Usually we do this before the show, but this is interesting just to look at her um, her history and biography. I don't know what happened to her. It's and it, and it's also crazy me. that Spike Out uh, came out before Super Monkey Ball. And then like Yaku- the Yakuza ziri- series reminds me a lot of Spike Out, but more... Uh, dramatized with better story more uh, you know console friendly yeah yeah for sure well, that's really interesting well now now i'm seeing a lot more connections here so yeah i definitely feel that virtua fighter 3 and the cg portraits and things from looking at the um just <laughs> the monkey ball characters even what they're what they're doing in their little cg poses for the early games um so this is this is where i wanted to get into Nagoshi's quote so his design philosophy philosophy was brought up in an interview with Next Gen Magazine. And he said, It may sound strange, but I am very bad at playing games. I used to spend a lot of money in arcades just to see the end game sequences, and I know how bad players feel if the game is too hard too early. And I think this game is perfectly suited to that philosophy just because... Um, you know, you pick up Monkey Ball and you're going to be playing quite a bit. You might not play through to the end, but it's it's addictive. It's fun. I think the difficulty level ramps itself up pretty fairly. And um, and to answer the question, I'm going to ask how this I think relates to games like Yakuza and Judgment. Um, you know, when you start up Yakuza Six or Zero or Judgment, there's there's very forgiving difficulty levels. Like it says right there, easy. I just want to enjoy the story. And I think that comes straight from uh, Nagoshi here, who just wants to play games to see the end sequences. So I, I can see how, in in the case of Monkey Ball, he creates something that's very pick up and play and easy. Whereas with something like Yakuza and Judgment, they are very deep game systems, but he gives you the choice to just enjoy it casually and get the story. Yeah. So that's that's interesting how. These games seem so different, but when you look at that design philosophy, you can see it being played out in certain ways. Yeah. What do you think? I might have answered everything, but I, yeah, I sort really of. And I think also Yakuza does this thing where, let's say you want a little, like, they do this thing where if you invest time into the game, he rewards you for that time. So like, if you really do a lot of side missions, obviously you'll be able to buy more objects, or they'll gift you with some items that will make you OP. So when you do fight a boss. It's a lot easier. So you could literally in that game just do little things around around the game. And then by the time you come to the main story, you're so overpowered that you're just like right. stomping through things. Like you get knives that could take 75% of the health. But to get that knife, you invested a lot of time in this side mission or these like side mini games or story hmm. modes. And uh, I think that's cool. And, that's, and I think that's that sort of philosophy where he's like, trying to make it easier and uh appreciate the time you put into it i guess to make other parts of the game easier so i don't know it's weird i, I like the yakuza games obviously so i like his philosophy i think people that uh 
think that games should be super hard. Maybe I, I think they should be challenging, but not super hard. And I think the more time you put right. into side stuff should make the main game easier. And I think that's fine. But yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> um. So, okay. So here we go. So well, well. Like I said, Sega Talk focuses on games, not franchises. And this episode's focused on the arcade original and its GameCube port, and it's kind of its sequel because I can't see us doing Super Monkey Ball Two episode for an hour. Um, I think we should talk a little bit about the sequels and spinoffs. So, okay. Super Monkey Ball was Sega's breakout game in the third-party era. This is me voicing my opinion. Uh, it acted as an introduction to Sega for many Nintendo fans, and the franchise introduced Sega to other platforms, including the Nintendo 3DS and App Store, and took advantage of unique peripherals and features, including the Wii Balance Board and the iPhone's accelerometer. And it should be worth noting, too, that Super Monkey Ball is really, for a while, it was Sega's like launch game. So when the 3DS came out, it launched with Monkey Ball. When the App Store began, Monkey Ball was the first game there, and I remember that was a huge deal because when they had the, um, the uh, d- I don't know what it was called, Mac World or whatever, they had huge like app icons of II like printed out and like alongside all these other apps, and it was like, I think that was a huge deal. Like, not to go down that rabbit hole, but like Super Monkey Ball launched with the, the App Store. That's pretty big. That's true. That's huge, I think. Like, when we talk about mobile games, like mobile phone games, like, Super Monkey Ball's basically, like, the Pong of of, uh, of the mo- App Store. Yeah. <laughs> and if you think about it, it makes sense because the game is pretty simple. Like, you literally just move back and forth. Mm-hmm. And do I think mm-hmm. that the app version and the accelerometer or whatever is better than GameCube? Of course not. But, like, yeah. if you're thinking about early uh, mobile games... Right. There's so many, like, mobile games that have come out be- after it, and it has worse controls, so it's trying to do a high-quality game on the iPhone, mm-hmm. and it was so long ago, it's it's insane that they, uh, I guess, put that much effort into it, because, I mean, even Nintendo didn't put anything on the app stores or anything until way later, like, maybe, what, four years ago? Right, yeah, and um, talking about the accelerometer, too, I think it's interesting when you play the GameCube or arcade version and then you play with the iPhone, despite it being a very similar game and sometimes even being the same game, they use some of the same maps, it's it's very different because when you're playing with the controller, you are controlling the ball, whereas when you're playing with the accelerometer, you are controlling the world around the ball. Yes, you're so tilting. it's Yeah, and so it's... It's it's a different way to... It looks the same, but when you're controlling it, it's this weird switch where now you're doing this, and I'm doing, like, you know, the movement with my hands here, whereas the other way, it's a little more precise because it's almost like you're in the ball rolling it yourself. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting because I can't think of many games where the game itself is exactly the same, but just doing one little tweak and you completely change the way the game's played. And I mean for better or worse. Yeah. And yeah, it changes it, but like what do you find more fun? Obviously I think mm-hmm. I think everybody will agree controller. Yeah. So that that's when you get to the situation where you're like, oh well I guess the iPhone version I mean I'm fine with having an iPhone version and having different ways of playing it, but man, it's yeah. I'm itching for a brand new super monkey ball to be honest with you like on consoles i'm surprised that we're yeah. talking about this and like like you said it was a launch title for all these systems and then yeah. come ps4 switch and this and now nothing yeah and i remember when um the news came that the vita was getting one and we were like whoa it's not dead whoa yeah. and i think when that game finally came out we were like oh it's too easy there were too many guardrails if i remember um yeah and so it's it's tricky because, like I was saying earlier, it's a very casual, friendly series. But, you know, I think there's a balance there that I don't pe- think people want to be coddled. It looks like a very baby game with all these little characters, but it's actually pretty difficult. And sometimes some of these games move it into a baby territory where it turns off a lot of the more seasoned or hardcore monkey ballers, you know. And um, you... You reviewed uh, Step and Roll, right? Yeah, a long time ago. What did you think about that? How did the balance board 
play? I think I gave it like a C minus. I did not play it with the, the board. I don't even remember playing mm -hmm. it with the board. I played it with the controller that it had. I just remember, I think it had the whole tilt fit. It was just the tilt f um, function, but yeah. you move it side to side. Um, I didn't play it with the board. I never owned the board. I wish I did. I remember I was looking mm -hmm. for the board when I was reviewing it, and then it was like 100 bucks, and I was like, just to play Super Monkey Ball for a review? Uh, yeah. So that wasn't gonna happen. But you could play it with the with this with the the Wii Mote. I just felt like it was super easy. Like they simplified it way more, and I didn't find it as enjoyable. A lot of people thought I I was too nice to, uh, in the review, but uh, like I said, it was our first review on Sega Bits. I didn't want to like right away trash the game and be like F <laughs> the worst Monkey Ball I ever made, guys. Um, it that one did have a brand new look where they were like you said more. Uh, mainstream mafied i guess i don't know what you would say they look more uh flat right like cell shaded yeah right but yeah i i it was an okay i mean it was an okay game but like it's just crazy that the first and the second one to me i seem everybody's always the one that considers those the best versions of the games yeah i'm looking at your original review here so this was written i think six days after the site launched yeah and you you said you like 60 frames per second, you love Mar Monkey Target, you were glad the storyline was dropped, and the level design improved over the last Wii game. I can't believe I'm reading a, a Sega Bits review from almost 10 years ago. This is kind of weird. <laughs> I don't stand by that review no more. It was 10 years ago. How I old was... are we? <laughs> we're, we're ancient. Oh my god. But yeah, you did give it a C, and I commented and I said, this game hey, sucked. I said, great review for a so-so game. And I suggested that we use letter letter grade graphics. And what's funny is I think what what that spawned was um, Rad Rappy doing the the letter grade graphics that we still use. Yes. And now the guy has his own cartoon series on on Disney Channel. It's because so of, it's, it's like, because Jesus. of the it's obviously because of what he did on that uh, for our <laughs> yeah. reviews. Obviously. I'm not well. Now we can't change them because it's like the. <laughs> The one thing that really, you know, shows that we're legitimate, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. We want to get... Yeah, right. Uh, so, um, yeah, and so I, I didn't really have a question for this section. I just wanted us to talk about how Monkey Ball Innovated Controls introduced Sega new platforms. Um, so, yeah, that's... I mean, it, it's if there is one Sega franchise that I would say is fitting for playing with new peripherals, it's Monkey Ball. Um, are there any peripherals you wish Monkey Ball had a chance to play with, but never did. Uh, I was thinking, like, I wanted to say maybe VR. I mean, they're even doing a Space Channel 5 in VR. It's so strange. Like, there's so many Sega games that I think about, like, oh, this game, maybe come back in VR. I never thought yeah. Space Channel 5, yeah, that one should come back in VR. I was thinking, like, House right. of the Dead or, like, those light gun shooters, like, Too Spicy or uh, even Afterburner, like a classic arcade bundle where it's, like, even the racing games could have right, like a right. second life on vr so to me it was weird that they chose uh, space channel 5 i don't know if i would mm -hmm. do vr for this one and i'm trying to think of like new technology but like yeah. i feel like this generation hasn't really like vr is the only thing we really did uh before we always had these weird things that would come out i guess we could say labo but pfft, yeah i mean i could see them attempting like because wasn't there was the uh, eye toy? D did wasn't there a monkey ball mini game in that? I don't remember how it played. I guess um, I, I think at this point people would be like, just bring it back on controls, please. Yeah, I, and I think that's the thing. I think the franchise itself went too far and started. People just wanted straight up controls. I think the Switch would be a great place to do a Super Monkey Ball three. I think they have the audience there that knows the game very well. I think they have the variety of control schemes there so that you could release it and Sega could say it uses the accelerometer, it also uses the basic standard controls that you know and love, and from what, what was that, the Sega Ages Space Harrier, they have that thing now where you can pretend to use the um, the, the Joy-Con in the air, like the classic yoke, you know, yeah. like you're sitting there. Yeah. And so I think they could do this and, and say, or play it like the classic arcade game with the banana stick, 
And they could even release like a banana peripheral that you put your thing in and you, you move your banana around. I even, I'm even i holding a banana here. I have half a banana. Oh. I don't know why. I just... You had a... I, I grabbed it. I was like, I'm going to eat it. And now I'm sitting here. I'm like, I don't really want to eat a banana. So that's me using the banana prop. Yeah, I, um, I agree with you. And they could even add all the stuff from the uh, original games. So yeah. you, the third one is really like the ultimate version of the games. Because like... That's really what one and two was, so might as well make three mm-hmm. that and plus more stuff like, you know, fixing stuff, adding more uh, modes, more mini games. Don't exclude yeah, anything. I, I'm usually one to say more platforms the better, but in this case, I think Nintendo exclusive would be really smart because, as we saw with Deluxe, when they bundled them and just put them on, you know, basic PlayStation, Xbox, it lost a lot of the the charm i don't know it just it just didn't feel like the right fit but i think with all the controller options there sega's higher ups would be like okay well it has the gimmicks so that's good but we can satisfy the hardcore fans and if they did the super because it's big thing right now is to do the sequels you know that people long wanted so super monkey ball 3 and have nagoshi like oversee it or something i don't know maybe it might be like a vacation for him he might enjoy it and and it's kind of weird that like this franchise has like not really gotten that much fan feedback and I feel like a lot of the hardcore Sega fans you know we're in mm-hmm. the minority but we're always like very loud so when yeah. you're a hardcore Sega fan you have a hardcore franchise you like you're probably going to be more hardcore online talking about it I feel like this franchise hit a audience that like is not online is not like yeah. always going please give me a new uh, super monkey ball like I can't right. see moms or, or children like, that would pick it up talking about it. Like, I was looking at my cousin's Switch and seeing what games he plays. Mm-hmm. He plays these weird, like, he has, like, this weird rogue dungeon cat game that I never even heard of, but he's, like, <laughs> super obsessed with it. So, like, mm-hmm. kids buy random things sometimes and just fall in love with it. And I feel like, <laughs> you know, you don't have to... Yeah. It's, this is, doesn't have the back, or it doesn't have the online cred that, like, Jet Set Radio has, but I feel like if it came out, people would just buy it and shut up yeah and that's a good point like i feel like sega's probably when they're putting out those surveys and stuff like what franchise do you want back super monkey ball people i think if if there was a broader way to get people's input like people on the street or something you know like Mm -hmm. you'd probably get more super monkey balls than shenmue or jet set radios but because we have all the crazy hardcore sega fans they want games that didn't see so many sequels but to be honest as much as i love the later super monkey ball games well at least some of them i feel like the we haven't really experienced what people loved so much about the first two titles in a long time. And uh, so I, we could talk yeah. about how, like, I think the the sales just dropped because, uh, like you said, it was on platforms that was kind of, like, strange. Like, all right, so you put it on the Wii, but you need... It says right there you need the, the, the little pad thing, right? Mm-hmm. All yeah, right. yeah, they put it... E- yeah. uh, even though it had other controls, I mean... Most people that just see it maybe will not buy it because of that. Then you put it on the PSP that was known for, like, piracy and then Vita that didn't sell anything. Yeah. So, it's kind of... I say get it... Sorry. Yeah. Go on. No, no I was just going to say, like, get it off of mobile, but then thinking about the Switch, like, that's perfect because I feel like Sega's convinced mobile is the place for it. And so that's kind of the best of both worlds. It would be a home console version, but it would have that mobile feel. I just... I feel like all I've seen them really pushing is the um, Sakura, Super Monkey Ball Sakura edition yeah. for the past, like, six years. <laughs> and it's weird because it's... And it's a great game, but... This is one of those franchises that had, like, what the hell? It's like, it had, like, I don't know, like, ten entries almost, it feels like, just randomly coming out. And then all of a sudden they're just like, all right, stop it, no more of this, let's move on. And it's kind of weird that they did that. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, there were ten total. That's crazy. Uh, main series games, and that's not even including mobile. Um, I think that's also not including like some of the handheld ones. Um, let's see here. So let's. So this this one I think is interesting. So, do you think I I had what it took to be a Sega mascot? And do you think Sega should have tried him out as one during Sonic's dark years of 2006-2007? Because my personal opinion is that I think in like at the height of Super Monkey Ball, they could have totally dropped Sonic for a while and pushed I.I. as the Sega mascot. 
I'm going to say no because I don't think uh, anybody will replace Sonic. I, I mean, just because even even when... Okay, so when the GameCube game came out, it, yeah, mm-hmm. it did 1.2 million. And that's incredible for a franchise that was literally unknown before Super Monkey Ball. Right. Uh, but Sonic's port of a Dreamcast game did like almost three times that. So like to, that's true. to say that it could beat it as a mascot... It's kind of hard, and I do agree there was dark yeah. years for the mascot, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I would say no because that's what Sonic fans want to hear, and I don't want to get yelled at. So Okay. I just thought I'd be controversial. That's fine. <laughs> you go ahead and be edgy. Uh, well, and it, it, my, my whole kind of hope or theory kind of falls apart when I mention this next part. So in 2006, Super Monkey Ball had a disaster of their own. You know, Sonic 2006, there's Super Monkey Ball 2006. 2006 was a bad year, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the game was titled Super Monkey Ball Adventure, and it was developed by Traveler's Tales. You know them from Sonic R, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Sonic R, right? 3D Blast, maybe? 3D Blast, 3D Blast. Yeah, 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 that's right. I'm getting confused, I think. Um, so the game featured five worlds, 50 characters, and 60 quests. So outside of traditional platforming, which did exist in this... There were less than refined traditional puzzles and some mini games. Have you played this or watched footage? And do you think it's as bad as some people have said it is? I, I have the game. Um, yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. It has its own little charms, but it's pretty. It's pretty terrible. Yeah, it's a disaster. Yeah, it's, that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty good way to describe it. Is it as bad as Sonic 06? No, but like the Super Monkey Ball formula is so easy that like I don't know how you screw it up. But right, yeah. Have oh, in Traveler's it? Tales, they did. Traveler's Tales did R and 3D Blast. I was, I don't know why I thought. I don't. Know. The, anyway, we're both I just right. Sonic fans to get mad. Yeah, um, I have not played it. It's been on my get list for a while, just because like sometimes I'll be on the lookout for weird games that I'd like to play so that I can have an opinion on them when we talk about them. So shame on me. I did watch some footage though. It looks really bad. Yeah, like it's like it looks like a just a stock platformer with the monkey ball characters slapped in yeah and then you suddenly get transported to the puzzle but it doesn't control as well and you'd rather just be playing super monkey ball too (laughs) should have just ported that but yeah i don't know what they were thinking um i don't know and the the story i was sitting through the cutscenes. it was it was so hard (laughs) i was skipping through because they'd be like and it would be like all this text going (laughs) yeah oh my god like no but then again i don't want them to talk no so it's it's tricky i don't know keep them classic i sound like just keep them what would i's voice sound like probably annoying and high pitch just keep them (laughs) do a, a sonic uh mania no talk it seems to be working really good for fans yeah that's true, that's true. Silence is golden. Um, so, despite several sequels, spin-offs, and ports, Super Monkey Ball has been dormant for some time, with the last game being a pachinko-style mobile title called Super Monkey Ball Bounce in 2014. Have you played that Do one? Do you think... S- I have played it, and it's forgettable. It's... I don't know why they made it. It's... I mean... It's, it's clear they were trying to play off the pachinko thing, but here in America, you play it and you're like, why isn't this super... What's going, why am I... Uh, uh, yeah. So do you think it's in need of a revival? And how would you bring the series back? I already did the, the, the pitch for the Switch. Yeah, the Switch. I, I think it should be on all platforms just because... Uh, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm already tired of hearing people complain about everything that's Switch exclusive. Like... Right mm. now, Panzer Dragoon Revival. I have to see it on Twitter all uh, Twitter all the time. Hey, why don't you bring this on PS4? Why isn't it on PS4? And yeah. I kind of agree. You know, at this point, it's like, all right, just just put it on everything. That way, people are happy and they give you the money. <laughs> and but right, uh, right, right. I I think that if Sega is not, I guess, confident in making a brand new one, they could at least give us an HD port of one and two. And call it one and two deluxe or whatever. I mean, deluxe plus HD remix edition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they like sticking them, sticking mini games in Yakuza and Judgment. So like Shin Yakuza, just put Monkey Ball. Ooh, Why not? 
That would be cool. I was going to say uh, they could also... Uh, but then maybe they'll say that the Olympic titles are their new mini games. I don't know. I think these games are totally different, so it wouldn't really cut into those sales. But uh, yeah. I would say yes. If if you can only do it on one platform, obviously the Switch one is the smartest one since it's kind of a callback to the first game because it was right. exclusive on the Switch on the GameCube for a while. Mm-hmm. So I'm okay yeah. with that. I would be too. So I hope someone's listening. Uh, but, um, in the meantime, like, I, I would be fine. I wouldn't mind seeing a Sega Ages port. Ooh, that would be cool. Um, for the Switch? Of, for the Switch of Super Monkey, of, of Monkey Ball, but with all of the levels. Because I don't think they're going to be doing Game GameCube games on Sega Ages, but if they do the arcade one and then... Uh, M2 does their, you know, wizardry where they kind of alter the game and add all the levels from 1 and 2. That would be kind of cool. That would be cool. Um, that would be cool. Uh, I also wouldn't mind to see Sega Forever releasing something. Like, I know they did the Sakura edition. That was a new game, so why not do another one? I don't know. I think that might be interesting. Um, yeah, so, I mean, is there anything else you want to say about Monkey Balls before we read no. uh, our... No? No. I think we're done. I mean, I'm am- so I'm amazed that we talked about Super Monkey Ball for an hour. Well, um. <laughs> we'll, probably, we'll probably talk about it more when we uh, end this and we're going to continue talking about it. Yeah, yeah. So, But uh, we have uh, a few patrons who shared their thoughts on Super Monkey Ball. And, of course, if you support us on Patreon, you get first come, first serve on the comments. In fact, I think I might just leave it exclusive to patrons for a little bit. Okay. Uh, Sorry, guys. We'll see. Sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Nick, Nicholas, Nicholas, he says, The Super Monkey Ball franchise as a whole has always been a pleasant surprise for me. It's never the reason I buy a system, but I'm always excited to play it when it comes out on a system I own. I guess it's for Sega what Kirby is to, Nin- Nin- Kirby is to Nintendo. I'm never really asking for a new entry, but always excited when one is announced. It was one of the first games to give me hope for Sega as a third party, and I really wish they would come out with more unique titles like this. Hmm. Uh, Jake says, I remember renting Super Monkey Ball for the GameCube back in the day and faking six so I could stay home from school to beat it. Never could, though. Well, maybe someday you will, Jake. And uh, from all of us here at uh, Sega Talk, thank you for listening. Don't forget, again, check us out on Patreon. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. And all uh, that. Five star reviews on iTunes. Bye. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Right. Gotcha. We could have done the whole thing as monkeys. We could have. <laughs>